Yo, what's up guys? I am back with another video today. Today, I'm watching an Aaliyah interview. This is from 2001. It's called the M6 PVQ LM interview. It's a 22 minute video. I don't know much about her. Like I know how she passed away and I love a lot of her songs, but I really don't know much about her as a person. So we're gonna watch this interview. So pretty. It's amazing to me when I when I think back and think about everything that I've done and how I started at such a young age and uh, but I feel very blessed you know I learned a lot I've been also I think she started around like 14 or 13 years old she was really young I think doing this for seven years now so I totally feel like a veteran even seven I'm years young, so oh. it's She's like it's 22 really and I, I feel very uh, I'm happy you know I, I'm doing what I've always wanted to do this is what I dreamed about doing when I was a little girl, and I'm, I'm doing it, so very happy. Mm -hmm. what, what were your, your dreams as a little girl? To be an this? entertainer. I wanted to sing, I wanted to act, I wanted to dance. From the moment I stepped foot on stage, um, <laughs> with six years, I'm happy doing this. <gasps> the play Annie! So, I know Ariana, Ariana Grande was in the play Annie when she was little, that too. Uh, at that time, you have some models, some people you looked up to. wanted to be? Yeah. I, Totally looked up to Sade. I thought she was absolutely amazing as far as music was Who's concerned. That? Uh, loved her style, her grace. She was just uh, everything to me as far as a music artist was concerned. And I looked up to Barbara Streisand because she did it all. She was an amazing. Oh my God! Well. I'm a huge Ariana Grande fan, so she always talks about Barbara Streisand and because like with Broadway and singing and acting and all that. So like I know a lot about her. So the fact that Aaliyah is bringing her up is insane. And uh, she realized her dream. She directed, she produced, she did it all and was successful at it. So I totally looked up to her as well. Mm -hmm. Did you, Do you remember the first time you really, your first memory about singing? Look how good she looks too. Like she just looks it would so have good. to be the play. I was in first grade and I remember auditioning for it. I first grade. The song that I sang. Um, but just that whole experience of being in the chorus, being an orphan, rehearsals. Uh, the whole nine. That was yeah. This facts as far back as I can go, and I just remember how much fun I had and how it was just pure bliss. You know, every day after school, going to rehearse for it and then being Aww. on the stage. And <laughs> it's the whole nine. It was great. When you were a child, what was the musical, uh, let's say, uh, vibe in the house? You remember <laughs> the sounds. You the musical heard. vibe. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Listen to, they listened to a lot of Stevie Wonder. They listened to Marvin Gaye, uh, a lot of Johnny Mathis. My mother loved Johnny Mathis and Luther Vandross. I remember I used to go. I don't know any of those except Stevie Wonder. Albums and put on the headphones. I wouldn't disturb everyone else in the house and sing along with Luther. I knew all of his songs and all of his albums. So those were the people that I liked. Yeah, I remember she called my um, mother and asked would. I liked to perform with her when she was doing five shows in Vegas oh. at Valley's Hotel. And of course, I was like, yes, definitely. <laughs> I've done a lot of performances at that point, and um, I felt it was really, really Dang. a great learning experience for me. So we went out to Las Vegas, and I sang Home in the middle of her show. She brought me out, and then she came out with me, and we sang Believe in Yourself together. She taught me a lot. She taught me how to work stage, how to captivate an audience, and, you know. Dang, she learned. Motion into a song, and to not be shook by being on stage. You know? <laughs> and I, the first night I was in, on stage, in the middle of the stage, and I just sang, sang straight up like a little broomstick and then just walked <laughs> off, you know, no feeling, no emotion. And she told me, you can't do that. You have to reel an audience in. So Aww. it was a great experience for me. That's actually so cool if she shared this experience because everyone comes from something and has to build themselves and learn i did dance concert in high school and i remember like going up there and being still and like you can't do that we had to rehearse we had to come there early we had to stay there for hours and like work 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 and i was i'm still a beginner dancer like i'm terrible but i at least practiced and like the whole experience like it helps and all that what's, what's been your, your, ambition, your ambition as an artist since the beginning and did it change through the years my ambition as an artist just want to be known as an entertainer. You know what I mean? I want to be looked at as, as an amazing performer, and it hasn't changed. And so far, I'm realizing it and making it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 
the retailers. Definitely. I mean, you know, coming out so young at 15 and having success. 15! Of course, it was... Oh, my goodness. I felt like I was in a daze, and I couldn't believe that this was happening. I'd worked so hard, you know. I, wow. I'd been rejected, you know. I, I lost on Star Search. I went out for a lot of... I auditioned with a lot of record companies that didn't think I had it. So to finally have that album and have that success, you know, I was like, wow, you know, I did it. So I, even to this day, there are times when I sit back and I'm oh. like, wow, you know, I've, I'm acting now. I've, I'm, I'm really doing everything that I want to do. And it's it's an amazing feeling, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That time, oh my time. god did you guys she said she's been rejected by all these record companies because they didn't think she had the sound like have you guys heard Aaliyah sing she is so talented i can't even like in that point she brings up where she said she's been rejected so many times and like when she finally made it she's like wow like i did it like that feeling that feeling is a feeling that a lot of us in this entertainment industry are trying to chase and reach i know i can relate to her and i know a lot of you out there who are also in this industry can relate to her as well there's a lot of no's and a lot of rejection literally no's all the time and sometimes it's not even you companies were rejecting how did i what how did i'm sorry what did you say how did you explain the, the fact that record, some record companies didn't the fact that you know some people weren't sure and, and didn't really think I had what it took, you know, it, of, of course it was painful and rejection is painful, but you know, I felt deep in my heart and in my soul that I had it and that I would do it and that I could do it. And I honestly believe that no matter what anybody said and I continued, I said, fine, you don't want me, somebody else will. And I Period. Will, I will get out there and I will be a star and I really meant it. And you have to have that frame of mind. You have to have that kind of confidence to make it in this industry or you won't make it. Exactly. So, uh, I did it. And I'm very proud of the fact that I did. How do you explain oh, that? oh my <laughs> God. That's cold. Uh, Even brought that up. She said you need to have that mindset in this industry. Dude, I really want to clip that certain part just to have it for myself and like put it in a track or something. That'd be so cool. It's just very popular. That's what's, that's what's winning right now. Kids love it, you know. Mm -hmm. Rap and hip hop, I think, will always be extremely popular. Um, so true. It's twenty twenty. Is you know, the music goes through different phases, and, it, and it's always it's it's ever changing, and you never know what's going to be working at, at at any given time. You know. That's at so true. Time, you know, so it, you just never know. You just have to kind of roll roll with the punches and go with the times, and and still just stay true to yourself, regardless of what's whatever is going on in the industry. I'm going to stay true to my style and true to myself, but I'm going to try oh. to cater to what the kids are liking and what they want. That's what's going on now. Mm -hmm. Businesswoman at the same time. <laughs> I don't know what special flavor of, in the R&B that's made now. What? That explains a special flavor in R&B. Oh, what's this? What's the like the special no flavor in R&B? There's no formula in this business. There's no science to it. You know, you never really know. You know, when you put an album together, you do a video, you just have to hope that people like it. Audiences can be very fickle, and you never really can tell what, what someone's going to like. You know, you could do something totally to the left, and it's huge, or they could hate it. So there's no recipe or formula. Mm -hmm. That's well, true. It's like trial and error. The, there is a kind of a family of uh, producers in the mm -hmm. United States who are very famous, like Baby Fett, Jimmy Wine, Timberland, etc., Missy Elliott, all these people who are known now for making hits. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, to your opinion, did can you explain that uh, R&B is so strong now because there is a kind of family of people? Well, I mean, I can talk about the family that I'm a part of, you know what I mean? But as far as like, I mean, everybody kind of has their own kind of family in the music industry period from hip hop to R&B and everything. I can't say that everyone's connected. I mean, people know each other. People have, people have collaborated with other people, but everybody kind of has, in a way, has their own sort of clique. So, um, I can't say that's... That's true. Why. And that's so, still um, the same today. That's what the question is, but, um, like I said, I, like, like Babyface and, and Timbaland and all that, they all don't run in the same clique. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, they, they may collaborate on something, but I can't say that's why R&B or hip hop is, is popular now. Yeah, yeah because it seems that uh, every, t every time now that uh, Ronda Jenkins... <laughs> why do they zoom in so close? Same right thing for Miss mm -hmm. It's been the same thing for R. Kelly. She's so beautiful. Et cetera, so uh, that's why I was uh, asking the question. What? I mean, people like their music. The mm -hmm. fans like like their sound. You know, Not gonna lie.
I know the interviewer is foreign, so that's why his questions are kind of like not making as much sense. But like, I wish his questions were more clear because they're kind of like all over the place. With a with a different sound, and it, it hit for a minute, so that's. But there's no, I can't say the real reason why. It's just people like their music. A year between albums. I took a break after One in a Million because I'd been touring, I'd been promoting the album, and I needed a break to just relax and rejuvenate and prepare myself for Aww. the next album. And, uh, he just asked her, why did you take a five-year break between her two albums? So I guess her first album was One in a Million, I believe. I'm not too sure with her album names and stuff. I guess she released the first album when she was really young, and then she took five years. It's crazy because artists these days are releasing albums, going on tour for a year, and then six months or a year later, they're already out with the second album. It's like a just popping out albums she said she had to take the time to rejuvenate and five years is a long time but like mentally it matters mentally because they have to do promo touring radio stuff work on their songs go through experiences to make their songs and all that so the break turned into a bit of a longer break than I anticipated. Um, okay, there you go. Things came up, the projects like Dr. Doolittle, and I wanted to do those things to keep myself visible and so that my fans wouldn't forget about me, but then Romeo the Sky came up, and that was a big chunk of my time taken out to do that film and then to do that soundtrack, and the years kind of passed quickly. Oh, that's so, that uh, movie, okay. The first bit of the break was a conscious decision, and then it kind of just rolled balled into five years. Mm. <laughs> you, you sometimes think of the the fact that there are many, many, many R&B singers mm -hmm. on, the, on the scene that make success and that. Yeah, there's a lot of R&B singers during that time. Very special, very special album too. Um, I mean, I, I definitely wanted to take my time in making this album and to put my best foot forward and put 110% into this for my fans. I mean, I aim to please them. I want, of course, please myself and make good music, but I aim to please them. So. I wasn't mad at the fact that I had the time to do that and, and to go back over some of the songs that I'd done before I even did Romeo and fix them and tweak them. So I do feel that in the end it was great because I, I, I feel this is my best album. This is the best work that I've done so far. But when it comes to like, you know, other people being out and other artists and the fact I didn't have a studio album, I don't, I never think about that. I really honestly don't. My fans have been there for me. They've supported me throughout <laughs> the years and I think they'll always be there. Mm. I was one years old when she passed away. The evolution of the music because uh, in the last couple of years we've seen the what they call two step mm. appearing and exploding. Mm. So, so you were thinking of, of things like like that when you were in the studio recording. I'm thinking of like what what was what music I don't know, was doing. New, uh, yeah, new fashions in R and B or. I don't let those things really influence me or influence my work. I mean, it's it's important to know what's going on and what's hot and what people are liking. But yeah, that's I true. Never let that dictate what I'm going to do. You know, when it comes time for me to record, I totally shut myself off from what's going on in music and I make my music. You know what I mean? I, I make what I think that's my Actually, that's really like. cool. They know me. They expect a certain sound and a certain style and they expect me to come with something different and that's what I concentrate and focus on and I hope that people feel it, but I never let whatever's going on influence that. Mm -hmm. That's so, that's so cool. Sum up your style. My style, I love when I read an article, someone said Aliyah's image and her style is street but sweet. And I love that because it is a bit hard edged. <laughs> it's that, she said street but sweet. That's actually really cool. It's, um, it is street. It's very raw. Some of the tracks are very raw. Um, so that a, someone like a DMX can get on a track and rap on it. And then I can come on the track and sing as well. And my voice is very sweet. It's very simple, a sweet, airy sort of sound. So I think that's very fitting. Oh, it's, it's street but sweet. Mm -hmm. Street but there sweet. Is, uh, <laughs> uh, there are some rock guitars. Mm -hmm. Another one which is kind of Latino influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like to play with different. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. I want to have give give everybody a bit of something. You know, I want I want everyone to be able to listen to this album and enjoy it and find something for them. And I think this album definitely. That's has cool. That. Mm -hmm. That's actually so cool. She so truly does care. You, as an artist and as a woman, how do you see yourself on the scene today? And you have. Uh, Goal to achieve as a the only goal I want to achieve is, like I said before, to be perceived as an entertainer. That's really all I'm trying to do, and to enjoy my work and make good music, See? And make good films, and you know, do good videos. Um, I see myself 
I like to look at myself as a trendsetter, as an artist that's cutting edge <laughs> and just an all around great performer. A trendsetter. Damn. I feel like she she definitely is a trendsetter. If you guys see her style and her outfits, it was very tomboyish, but at the same time, like very sexy, very cute outfits. Like the way she mixed her tomboy outfits with like really nice clothing and stuff, it reminded me of Billie Eilish a lot, like baggy clothes and like the shades and the bandanas. Like I feel like Billie Eilish definitely learned from Aaliyah, like definitely was inspired by Aaliyah a little bit at least because I know Aaliyah definitely set that trend for sure. It was just brought back The movies, and she was in acting too. I know it was a conscious dream. Mm, yeah, but how did that particular project mm -hmm. come to happen? Um, I went to Warner Brothers to meet on another project, and the head of Warner's, Lorenzo de Bonaventura, asked me what was I looking for in a character, what kind of film did I want, and I told him what I was looking for. I wanted a character that was similar to the Ali that people knew, someone who was a bit tough, independent, the Ali, so forth and so on. And I also realize she pronounces her name as Alia, not Alia, because there's two A's in it. So I feel I feel bad saying Aaliyah because I like pronouncing it the way the artist pronounces it, but I didn't realize it was Aaliyah. And he told me about Romeo, and I was like, it's perfect. I knew Jet Li. I was like, it would be great, you know, for his <laughs> vehicle. And I met with Joel Silver after that, did a screen test, and that's how I got that part. Mm -hmm. People doing the, the fight. No, that was all me. I made sure of that. I was like, look, I really, really want to do my own stunts. I want to get in the harness. I want to flip around. Please let me do it. Now. Sure, <laughs> you go ahead and train, and you go ahead and do it. And that's you know, so cool. She did her own did stunts. One of the last scenes we shot had a ball doing that. It's kind of like J Lo. Like J Lo was getting into the whole acting, dancing, singing. You, that's crazy. If you're close to her, how do you uh, do you play with her to career with uh, acting and singing? Because I saw for the last album you were doing some stuff uh, in different places in the states, but you were filming in Australia. So mm -hmm. Well, it's, it seems double the workload, you know, having two careers. And oh, wow. She was doing her singing and, and acting at the, the same time. At the same time, so I would shoot in the day, in the day, go in the studio at the night, and vice versa. So it's, wow. you know, it's extra That's work. hard work. I totally can handle it. I love it. The people Aww. that surround me, from my publicist to my record company to the studios, they're all very understanding, and everyone works hand in hand. So, uh... Right now, we're just trying to juggle it as best we can. We don't really try to schedule it too much. We just kind of go with the flow and let it work itself out. That's dope. Uh, what's the difference, is there a difference in your, in your approach of the two careers? When you are about to, to act and when you're about to sing, there are different sensations or different approaches? Well, yeah, the approach is totally different. I mean, when I'm singing, I'm still Ali. And when I'm acting, I'm a totally different person. So there's time that needs to be taken to go into being this other personality, being this other person, I need my time to myself to kind of, you know, switch and, and, and become that person. Whereas with music, you know, it's a little bit different. I still need my time to meditate and kind of get into a, a, a mode where I can release my emotions and yeah. well into a song. That's but facts. That's it's, facts. It's, There's uh, like a mode and all that. Not as intricate as becoming somebody else. Intricate. So I, I like that. The two differently. Mm -hmm. Intricate. Do you think the one <gasps> oh my god. My mom had a bracelet just like that. And like you can put your own charms on it. That was like very like 2000z. Feed the other or help the other. Well, definitely. I think you know one goes hand in hand, you know. Definitely my celebrity helped me get noticed for Romeo, you know, and and, and uh so I'm thankful for that, but It goes hand in hand. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. acting and singing. Uh whatever comes my way, I'm going to go after it. I, it just has to happen. It has to just pop up. But there's nothing in particular that, that I'm looking for right now. Mm -hmm. You have the sensation that uh, nowadays it's, it's becoming uh, usual for female singers and actors or, or female actors to, be, to become singers. I think of Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. She was first an actor. Mm -hmm. And now she's, she's going to be J Lo. Mm -hmm. so you have a lot of people. Yeah. How do you explain the fact that? Well, you know, you have a lot of people that are multi-talented and, and they're, you know, now that people are trying their hand at other things and I think it's really cool. Um, yep. As I told you before, my reason for it was, always, it was always part of my plan. It was how I was raised, it was how I was trained. I can't say, you know, what their reasons were for doing it, but um, if, if you've got the talent to do it all, why not go for it? So yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. We need to just finish it up. Okay, last question. Was the, um, the director you really like to, to do a movie with? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I would 
love to work with. <laughs> what if she says Steven Spielberg? Imagine. Ridley Scott. Never mind. Like <laughs> Jurassic Park. Park. I was he's, thinking of that. His work is beautiful. Gladiator. Well, that was. Oh, that was okay. Movie, so that movie. I, I think he's an amazing director. You see yourself like Timmy Nelson. I, I, I see myself doing so many things. I think I can do anything. I, I could. Totally I could see her <laughs> in. Be fighting an alien. Or an alien, a dinosaur. Guys, like in, in, in a gladiator. So. Can you imagine Aaliyah in Jurassic Park? Like oh, that would have been so sick. You know. Yeah, I'd like to go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, this interview is so. Look at her jeans. <laughs> loved this interview i am so glad i watched this i really 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 wish she was here today and imagine her music now and but you know everything happens for a reason it's super super sad but i love the message and the mindset she has especially as an artist i am definitely gonna watch her performances that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed please don't forget to hit the subscribe button follow my social medias down below comment what you thought about the video and what else you want me to watch and yeah that's pretty much it stay safe stay healthy and keep a positive mindset Peace out.